heard. Hey, thank you, recording lady. Yeah. So uh, in our first, I know, first commission meeting, right? Then we'll talk about value proposition mapping, uh, which I would say uh, it's the most important part for you as a salesperson. Like uh, how strategic you can be and uh, how well that you can run sales, it really goes back towards uh, how much you understand uh, your product's value proposition and how much you can play around with it. Yeah, so, uh, but the, the basic stuff is also back on this. Yeah, so I think before I go into any uh, too detailed thing, right, let's do an activity first, okay? So uh, if you guys have already done this activity before, I think maybe a few, uh, one or two done before, then you can uh, guide the others. So I'll break you guys into breakout room. So we we'll make a random breakout room. Uh. So let's do an activity, right? So just throw away all the Isaac things, yeah. So now uh, you are going to sell nasi lemak, okay? As a proud Malaysian, you sell nasi lemak. But then you are selling uh, in different stores like that. Lah. So you are different, different tauke or different boss like that. Yeah, so first one is you are a nasi lemak warung. Lah. So uh, I hope you guys know what is warung, yeah. Yeah, nasi lemak warung. Then uh, the next one is nasi lemak chain store. So I have many, many stores. And then third one, I'm selling nasi lemak fast food. So you can't cheat to say that these three are the same. So these three are just different and they're not related to each other. Nah. I want you guys to list down, right? If let's say you are the boss of, uh, let's say nasi lemak warung, then uh, what are the challenges that uh, you would face? Like, especially in current situation, maybe you take into consideration COVID or uh, anything, right? So what is the challenges that you would face? And at the same time, based on the challenges you mentioned, right? What is the B2B partner you would try to find or those B2B partners uh, would be relevant to you? Yeah, so again, it's B2B, a business side one. Yeah, so, but if you're not familiar with B2B, then uh, you can go practice first. Yeah, then after the breakout room, we'll come back. So I'll give you guys five minutes. We arrange breakout rooms. Yeah, first time, then you guys can talk. Okay, assign automatically. Ready, so cha -cha. Okay, so we have three to four people. So I'll create. Ah, okay. Then I will move. Okay, so I open the room so you can go into your respective rooms. Huh? Yeah, so room one will be A. Lah. Hey, welcome back. So I hope you guys uh done well. Yeah, so wouldn't have the perfect one, but that's why you have a uh, working space, right? So limited time. Yeah, I see. Macam Group C, group number three, quite interesting. Yeah, maybe you guys uh, can have one person to share. Okay, I'll share. Okay, I'll share. Okay, I'll share. I think I will go. Mm, for, for this, uh, our challenges is in terms of like, to ensure that the standard of the quality of the food is being maintained, uh, especially in terms of like, the expiration date and uh, and in terms of the food taste, yeah, and then after that, um, yeah, the challenges is in terms of like the process of conducting the food because, like, um, uh, if in terms of this, we need to ensure the people who operate it have like in of injection, yeah, yeah, injection, yeah, and then, um, competition, yeah, especially with a uh, type of nasi lemak A and B, yeah, why do they need to buy? Um, our frozen food because A and B is like much more delicious and yeah and then for the next one is halal certificate though, because it's very difficult to yeah to be able to get it yeah, and then maybe for partner maybe can have Jai or Anissa to share um, I think I can go um, okay so first thing we could like uh, partner up with convenience stores because usually in convenience stores they serve uh, you know, ready-made or like frozen foods, right? And then also like fast food chains because um, apparently McDonald's sells nasi lemak and I know damn well that McDonald's do not make food from scratch so they could use our products, I guess. Um, yeah, there's that. And then supermarkets, I think it's similar to the like convenience stores. Um, you know, nasi lemak ready-made, I think, yeah, we could like partner with the supermarket to like sell our stuff uh food delivery uh, sorry food delivery partners so we could get the food around e-commerce websites so maybe like in shopee or yeah we could sell our frozen nasi lemak and then packaging manufacturers because of course we need 
to package our frozen food properly, right? Um, so we do need to like partner up with, yeah, packaging manufacturers. I sound like I'm repeating myself. Mm. Then we have food suppliers because for us to like make the food, we need like suppliers to like provide us the ingredients. And then last but not least, uh, drop shipping agents. So yeah, having agents to like sell our stuff. I hope you guys understand what drop shipping means because I'm not very good at explaining. But yeah, mm, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Group Three. Yeah, kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. So I think here, right? Uh, want to let everyone know. So, uh, definitely the things that you written down is valid. I mean, you guys are university students, so you guys have the basic understanding of business. Yeah. But I think one part that may be a little bit tricky, right, is that when you are listing down these, right, one thing you need to think about is, uh, does my B two B partner reflect the challenge or not? So what do I mean by this? So for example, here you have the ensure quality of food is maintained for a long time, right? But then which partner can actually support you to actually tackle this challenge like that? So probably convenience store cannot, but maybe food supplier, okay, maybe on that, then this is the kind of B2B partner uh, would be the main one that would tackle your challenge or pain. So not to say others aren't your B2B partner, but then uh, the thing that you need to keep in mind is uh, which one solve. Uh, which solution solve which problem like that. So for example, here we written down HALA certification, right? But I think from here, at least my side that I see, uh, I can't see any B2B partners that can solve this problem. So this would be like one of the big pain. And then I think here, like you mentioned dropshipping agents, right? Then uh, I think Sunisa also got mentioned in terms of the pain of all oh, got competition from others, then uh, people might not want them, then they, they have like distribution. So maybe that would be the challenge that you need to uh, keep in mind also. And a few things that uh, you can also think another way around while doing this practice. For example, nasi lemak frozen food, right? Maybe you can think of, okay, uh, what kind of people would probably need this kind of product? Because I probably want to eat a uh, very fresh food. Ma. So maybe for me, I'm in a very rushed situation. Maybe today I run a conference, then my lunch hour only have half an hour. Then probably this would be the more convenient option. Then maybe my B2B partner, uh, would be maybe, you know, those locations that host conference that can immediately prepare food uh, out of the stock with a very cheap option. Yeah, so same goes with the other examples also. So for example, uh, I think here, yeah, COVID less customers than the delivery partner would uh, make a lot of sense also. Yeah, because people can't go in to eat. Then maybe for chain store, they have the pain also, but then the pain wouldn't be as big. So uh, like, the de same delivery partner, right? They provide more value to this Nasema Warong. And at the same time, maybe a bit lesser to Nasema chain store. And maybe for chain store, they have other pains. For example, let's say, you know, they also need to maintain the quality of food. Ma. Because if today I go one chain store, eh, they taste good, the other one tastes bad, sucks like that, then also would uh, hurt my reputation. So maybe from there, uh, my food supplier need to uh, maintain properly, or I need someone that can help me uh, train my employees, all those stuff, yeah. But uh, we are not going to sell Nasir Mark, so I think I already go through a little bit detail about the example. Yeah, so let's come back in terms of talking about uh, BD, value proposition, B2B partnerships, all those. Yeah, so the uh, few things that you need to keep in mind. So uh, in this role, right, B2B, which I would say, for, from my opinion, is the privileged one because <laughs> B2C one, I think uh, a bit loud, yeah? No, not loud, yeah? I mean, I was B2C before, but anyways, yeah, but I think B2B one, uh, we tend to get the opportunity to uh, expose towards corporates, uh, organizations like that. So we are working with an organization instead of individual. And the natural language that we should have in mind is to keep the business model can canvas inside our mind. So later I'll explain a little bit more in terms of how we are going to apply this or use this. Because maybe B2C, uh, you talk to certain people, you know, uh, you go to, let's say, you go to a restaurant, no, you go to Mama, and then you uh, drink one Teh Tarik, maybe it's uh, 60 cents like that. Okay, maybe, not 60 cents, maybe one buck. Then it tastes like shit, right? Then you wouldn't go towards this store again. But then it wouldn't have too big of a change. But maybe for B2B, you need to keep in mind, okay, I'm working with this person for like six months, then uh, the impact will be quite significant. So I wouldn't simply sign a partnership with you also. Yeah. So uh, the three things here, bring value for mutual growth. So it's both sides. So uh, partnerships, right, is 
not so it's not a one side purchase you know so uh maybe let's say in the past when you do sales you're asking for donation or sponsorship then it might be a one-way thing because you ask people to give you money but you don't give anything in return but then now uh, when you are doing fp sales or partnerships right uh most of the time in fact all of the time you're actually doing your yeah, partnership which is uh both sides are buying so even though it's the corporate paying the money but then uh you are also buying them in a sense, because you need to see whether they are the kind of partner uh, that you want or not. Yeah. And then also align priorities and then also cultivate strong relationship. I think I went a bit with detail just now. So what I mean here, yeah. So every organization has the role that they want to play. And then at the same time, uh, you need to be very aware is that uh, what are the things that the other organization want to do? Is The priority is not about uh, closing the sales or getting the money, but it's more on uh, looking into what are the opportunities that both sides can get values up. so if let's say uh today you are discussing a partnership that is you know maybe the partner want you to do certain advertising but then we are not a advertising company man. we are a youth organization then this is something that doesn't bring value to you also then uh it doesn't serve your own a uh, role to actually i'll say play then this a partnership wouldn't be uh purposeful for both sides also and at the same time, the other thing that you need to keep in mind is also aligning priorities for both sides. So every organization are busy, like, you know, not only Isaac and everyone is busy. And then, uh, you know, everyone have four quarters, fiscal year, uh, you know, Isaac restart up in February, maybe other uh, organization, they start their fiscal year at uh, April or maybe May like that. So if we don't fit into their timeline, right, even though uh, the things that we do might be interested to them, but we simply wouldn't be their priority. And this goes for uh, all skills, no matter it's uh, SME, MNC, or maybe governments, they have their own initiative also. Uh, yeah. And last one is also the cultivate strong relationships. So even though we are talking about B2B, the professional side, right? But then uh, in upcoming commission meets, I also explain more, but wouldn't touch too deep today. But one thing you need to keep in mind is the relationship part is very important. Yeah, like we talk about professional, but at least in Malaysia context, uh, the human relation is very uh, important. Like the trust part is very important. So again, right, uh, like I mentioned just now, you go to a uh, mama, you drink a day tare, it sucks, right? Then you wouldn't go there anymore like that. But the, I will say, you only lose one buck or maybe that mama only lose one customer, one buck like that. But then if let's say you are signing a MOA and then it's like 10K and then if it fuck up, then it's like fuck up 10K of money. So people wouldn't simply sign 10K. And that's why B2B sales also takes more time. Like normally, especially for MNCs, uh, like might go even up to six months. Like I have one national partner, talk until now almost going to be one year, but I haven't signed. Yeah, but a lot of things inside. Uh, okay, yeah. And then normally B2B would be long-term. Uh, so that's why the trust, the relationship would be very important. Like if I don't really know you well, or your reputation is not strong or anything, then uh, I simply just wouldn't throw my money into the sea. Uh. Yeah. So after talking about all this, right, let's do the practice again. But now it's the other way around. So just now is uh Nasir and Mark need to find what kind of B2B partner, right? But now it's sort of like you are the B2B partner and you are going to tell everyone in terms of what kind of people would be your customer like that. Yeah. So oh, but here I already said your customer would be government. Uh, yeah. But uh different uh agencies or different uh, companies would have different uh needs also so we have speak up so i paired up with government then uh for cop i paired up with uh mnc and then uh, we have awa so i put buy size logo but you can do any awa event uh. yeah and then paired up with sme so i want you guys to list it down right what are the challenges that uh each of your respective profile or customer would face if you let's say you are in charge of this respective project uh, or this would be your focus and then uh, why should they even partner with you for this event like that like why would they even pay you money or I was saying like uh, what are the things that you can offer to them? So I'll bring you guys into the same group again. Yeah. But before that, any questions? Mm, actually, right. I Google um, government is a part of B2B, but then some said not a part of B2B. So hey, is government hey, hey. part of B2B? You, you consider it as B2B. Mm. I mean, it's, government is not business in a way it operates like a business lah. but then when we run sales also include government also okay yeah Ang, you're from b2c i was also okay on all rooms 